I've had so many requests to talk about the art that I'm doing and show the art that I'm doing in my planners that I decided to do a video of it all together but in the end I I didn't you do I didn't include my A5 Malden in this because there's so much artwork and it's already probably going to be 30 minutes without that so I'm going to do that separately but I wanted to show some of the supplies that I use consistently and honestly you can do I mean I think that we all have a ton of pens from jet pens and there are entire pictures I did with nothing but uh, gel pens and this is the um, slim fit five color multi it also has a pencil a refill which is great it doesn't have an eraser refill though so most of my um, I initially draw everything and the Coletto has I'm waiting for my refill the Coletto has it both a pencil and an eraser refill which makes it perfect for um, you know there are a lot of ways to make on-the-go um, little art kits but something that has uh, a pencil, an eraser, and a couple of outline colors, or black in two thicknesses, is really compact and great to bring with you um, for, for sketching. Um, I use several multi-pens. This is actually a friction multi-pen. Uh, this is a slim fit multi-pen. And this is the Pentel uh, 8 color pencil, which I did a review on in a video. This is not a watercolor pencil. This is a straight pencil, but it is um, awesome. Um, the other thing that I use are different types of watercolor pencils. I have two brands. One is uh, Stadler. One is Faber-Castell. You, you draw with it like a uh, pencil. And then I you can use a regular watercolor brush, but I like these. Um, I get them at, hang on a second, <laughs> sorry. I get them at Jet Pens. They have all different sizes, uh, full length and little compact size, and also brush tip size. This is what they're called. They're easily searchable on jet pens, and I I have the compact size, but I like the full size better, and it fits in a regular pencil case. You just fill this with water, and you are always ready. And I use that with the two um, brands of pencil. These, I would say these are uh, moderate priced. Um, they're probably more student plus grade. They're not um, as pigmented as professional artist pens. Initially, I liked this one a lot better. But I think there might have been a coating on this one that made it difficult to work with initially. Um, over time, um, I think these are equally easy to use. I think this one might be a little more pigmented in the color. And I use these. These are from Jet Pens also. This is the brand. And you could just do a search for SAI watercolor brush pens. Uh, they come in singles and in and, um, in sets. And I have two of the sets. I'll, I have the spring set and the summer set. And I will probably get more of them. Uh, these are very nice to work with. The colors are very clear and the colors are pigmented. I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but it has a, 
a flexible brush shaped tip and I'm using this color because I want to be able to get it get it off and if it doesn't come off so this works like a Japanese calligraphy pen somewhat it's nowhere near as flexible as a regular brush would be but it is definitely um, you know workable for all kinds of uh, art applications and the colors are beautiful um, and I have a lot of them now I think I have 10 of them not sure really really pretty really nice colors um, and then I use various um, pigment markers for outlining um, also this is the Coletto very very skinny good for outlining and filling in small areas um, but I will use anything that's the right color um, the only consideration that I uh, oh the garbage truck is outside sorry not very artistic but that's life um, and then I'll use any pen I have in the right color that works with the paper that I'm using um, you know I try to avoid the juice pens with the uh, Tomo River paper because it literally takes probably half an hour to dry. Uh, I'm not even kidding. Um, but those are some of the options um, for artwork. If you want to do artwork in your planner or anywhere, use whatever you have. I mean, if it's just a pencil, use a pencil. You know, if it's whatever your planner pens are, use those. Um, you know, if you want to expand, um, these are a great option. And because they're watercolor, they can be blended with extra water. Um, this is a straight pencil. That's terrific to bring. Um, so, I'm going to show some of the artwork that I did. This is ultimately a flip through with a little bit of chat during uh, the flip through and I'm going to have to do a separate one for the um, A5 Malden because that has the majority of the artwork and like I said this is already going to be 30 minutes long so I hope you enjoyed the um, flip through and I hope that um, more people start drawing or doodling or being creative um, every day it's Good for the soul. The artwork started in my uh, Midori Traveler's Notebook and right now I have it rubber banded together with the, um, the Midori rubber bands with a another uh, Midori brand insert. Where is that? This is the information. I'm trying to use YouTube Capture for the first time, so I'm not 100% sure how this is going to come out. But um, it is a, a craft, a spiral bound craft notebook, and I like the craft paper a lot. Um, I've done brush painting on it but I'm not sure how it's going to do with watercolor so we'll see but this is what I have um, this is what I have been using it's it's got a white cover it's got six pages and it is the I don't even know if it says it anywhere It really doesn't. It just says Traveler's Notebook. But this is the, the sketch um, insert with fewer pages but thicker pages. Um, it's really good for 
artwork, I'm sure it would probably hold up to um, collage. Uh, it holds up reasonably well to watercolor pencil uh, unless I am just reworking it to death. So the, um, the artwork journey started uh, in November with some really simple drawings and some of these I've shown, most of them probably I've shown, um, a lot of them were exercises in um, light and shadow and spheres and perspective um, and uh, simple things that I've done before. The watercolor pencils are really good for things like this because you're, you're just Um, you know, you're, you're, I'm more comfortable drawing than watercolor painting, so it's easier for me to, you know, add the color and add it in the direction that it needs to go, and then go over it with, um, one of these. It's a portable, uh, brush pen that you put water in. It's not for ink, and so... So you can blend the colors um, on uh, watercolor. And I moved on to more shapes and some planners and then some facial features. And the thing about me is I can copy a feature and make it look fairly realistic. I mean, I would say that's fairly realistic and so is this, but putting them all on a face has been a challenge. Um, they tend to be a little on the cartoony side and not proportional. So that's part of why I'm doing this, um, you know, so I can get better um, at what I do. Now this was a lot of watercolor pencils and this one came through the back a little bit um, but considering how much color I laid on, how much working and reworking that I did, this paper held up remarkably well. Uh, most of the images in here were done with what I started with which was the um, brush pen and these the uh, Faber Castell watercolor pencils and the Stadler Ergo Soft Aquarelle pencils. Um, these can be used. As pencils, they can also be used as watercolors. You can do sort of a combination of the two. Um, I think it's a good introduction into watercolor because most people are going to be, no matter how uncomfortable they are with art, they're more comfortable doodling with a pencil than they are with a watercolor palette and a brush. So, you know, this is really a good way to add color to even doodles or text or backgrounds. Um, neither one of these is, I mean, the, I, I would say these are probably student, student grade. Um, it takes some time to get the color. Um, it takes some effort to get the color. If you use the pencil, if you dunk the end of the pencil in water, you can, you can get it a fairly thick line going here, but this isn't really, you know, how I prefer to work. Um, there's some perspective practice. This is something I never finished, but it's also the watercolor pencils. This was a, um, this is, so this is January, so I've been doing this for like two months by then. 
and this was interesting because it it had a strange perspective it's it's actually my um the, the uh, thing that i put all my my art and planner supplies in and you can get a nice finish with the um, watercolor pencils and then i started i really wanted to do ventura but i'd never done um dogs before so I started with the eyes and they came out pretty good and these were my son's when he was little maybe two or three and these were Ventura's eyes too and this was much closer to what I was looking for um, I could see the position he was in I could see that it was from the dog and I eventually did move on in other places to doing dogs and I'll show them in another book. Um, these are called Zen Dangles. They're like Zen Tangles um, but they you know they hang they look like jewelry to me I think. They're really cute. Uh, for these I was using pen. Um, you know, all the pens that I got from Jet Pens <laughs> over the last couple of years, I used gel pens, I used Coletto pens, um, I used Micron. I mean, you can really do some nice artwork just with pens from your pencil case. Um, I know some people draw these straight out in ink, but I, at the very least, draw these straight lines in pencil first. And that was my first end angle. And I was happy enough with it to continue doing it. And then I decided I would try to move on to drawing dogs. Uh, this is uh, Ventura, something that's just a sketch. There's another one. I mean, this one was an odd angle and didn't really work for me. And this is from a picture of my son in Ventura, but this is a little strange. Um, too weird, too cartoony, too off. Um, and this is Ventura. And that one I was actually really happy with. This is mostly um, the watercolor pencils, uh, although there is some ink in the very white whites and the darkest blacks. Um, and that's it. Uh, so I used this book up and I plan on trying to work in here. I'm not sure how the paper is going to hold up, but that's my, that is my plan. And that's it for the Midori. So this is the uh, Hobonichi Techo Cousin Planner uh, with a cover and a cover for the cover. Um, I'm using this as a planner right now. Uh, if you're thinking about getting this, I know a lot of people are. Um, I. I thought it was hard to work with without the cover. Um, I always had to. I always had to put a book under it, like a hardcover book, and um, I think for a desk, if you have a planner mostly open on your desk, you wouldn't need a cover. But I was bringing mine around, and I crunched a lot of pages. And oh, hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi, you gonna come lay down? Hi, look at that nose. Look at that nose. Okay, honey, let's uh. <laughs> okay, you're gonna lay down now. Oh, good boy. Um, so with the blank pages that I had, cause I I got it a little ways in. Um, this one is in Japanese. It starts in April, but I have some blank p 
pages and I am doing a lot of brush pen practice. I will put links in here. I got uh, two sets of these Um, why is it always upside down? Um, yeah, YouTube Capture doesn't uh, focus really well, but I will uh, put a link to these. I got these on Jet Pens. They have a spring, summer, winter, and fall set with corresponding colors. You can also buy them in singles and they work just like watercolors so you can do the same thing basically that you do with the um, watercolor pencils except they come out like watercolors and you can also use them for brush paintings um, because the tip is while it's not as flexible as a you know a brush pen brush um, you can do some of the same manipulations to get, you know, fish and trees and flowers. And uh, these are really nice. The colors are very clear. They're very pigmented. They're very true to, you know, what they look like. Um, and you can add color on top of color to get depth. Um... And so these were my initial, uh, my initial attempts with them. And it, there is a learning curve with these. It's, they're not, you know, the way most people paint and um, and draw. Um, but the results are really nice, I think. So then I, I did a cartoon. This was, yeah, Ventura. I, I, he, can't, he never sleeps on the bed. He always sleeps here. But when we were away at this Greyhound event, um, he wasn't comfortable. So I uh, let him up on the bed, and that's about the size of what happened. Um, he took up the whole bed pretty much. So that was a cartoon that I did and this was mostly the watercolor pencils. And this was from a photograph. And if I can, I'll in insert the photograph here. Um, this was Ventura seeing the ocean for the first time. And this was a combination of um, the watercolor pencils and some of these to get these nice uh, soft areas. Ditto. This was a combination as was this one. Um, and so I have, you know, like, I, I'm really, I really believe that you get better at what you do and my later drawings were better than my earlier drawings and particularly with things like the brush pens um, because it's you know you it's an unpredictable thing but after you do it for a while you sort of have an idea of what's going to happen probably and these I actually did yesterday, like rose, rosebuds and a rose. And I would say that they are better than the ones that I did, um, you know, initially. Um, not that there's anything wrong with these, but I would say that is a much more elegant rendition of roses um, and these were all the brush pens you can see the colors just beautiful it's very clear if you add water you can make it lighter you can get um, beautiful variation in colors um, so 
So here we're in mid-May. Um, this was a combination of things too. This is another Zendangle. I really like these. I, I think they're really fun and just, I don't know. This was a cold day. I don't think I was feeling well. And I drew some soup. This was, I, I was in the hospital. I was waiting for my father to have a procedure and I was just filling in the graph squares and I needed to take a nap that day. Um, this is um, this is actually that uh, not the washi tape, but the tape that comes on the little squares, and you just peel it off. And it had a little squares on, it and I just filled those in. I and I like this. I would do this again. It sort of reminds me of the way squares look when a blanket folds, and I think that would be a great way to get um, a really cool blanket. And I did this one yesterday. This was the last one I did. And this is, I did a pencil drawing first, and then I used the brush pens, and then I used a Coletto pen to make the outline, the outlines, because um, the Coletto takes a reasonable amount of drying time on this, and um, I didn't want to. I didn't want to smear the Coletto. I actually did smear the Coletto twice, even though I waited a pretty reasonable amount of time because. But I just used a white gel pen. So that is the art in the Hobonichi.